Some sunrise behind me. Missed the best of it, but bands are beautiful. Well, that was a beautiful sunrise. Missed most of it, but man, it was sure was red. Book of Jonah from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Let's see. Let's see, this famous account of Jonah and the giant fish was found in five of the ten minor prophets' manuscripts. Neither the book nor the prophet attracted any attention among the non-biblical scrolls that survived in the 2,000-year storage in the caves. The wonders that the Qumran community members might have thought of God's forgiving Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, one of Israel's greatest enemies. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come, upon, come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, paid its fare, and went down to it to go with them Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty storm on the sea, so that the ship was about to break up. Then the sailors were afraid and cried every man to his God, and they cast forth the wares and were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship, and had laid down and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, What are you doing sleeping? Get up, call to your God. Perhaps the God will take notice of us that we might not perish. And they said to one another, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell to Jonah. Then they said to them, him, Tell us, we pray you, on whose account this evil has come on us, and what is your occupation, and where do you come from, what is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, the Lord, the God of heaven, and I fear he who has made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said to him, What is this you have done? For the men knew he was fleeing for the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may calm down for us? For the sea grew more and more temptuous, tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. And the sea shall calm down for you. For I know that it is because of me that this great storm is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to get back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. We have a note here. The Greek manuscript known as 8 Hev 11 GR, so named because it was found in Cave 8 at Nahal Hever, and contains the 12 minor prophets written in Greek, begins in Jonah 1.14. The first half of the manuscript script has fallen prey to the elements. It is of critical importance in the history of the Septuagint because it was systematically revised to reflect the Mas Masoretic text. It is significant witness to the Hebrew tradition as well. Its origin was reported in 1952 by the Bedouin to be uh, Wadi Sadial, some 25 miles to the south of Qumran. However, scraps of the manuscript found in the so-called Cave of Horrors in 1961 by archaeologists clearly place its origin as Nah at Nahal Hever, five miles to the north of the original claim. The Bedouin were evidently determined to keep the Cave of Origin, the source of additional income, to themselves. 
An additional curiosity is the fact that the personal name of God, Yahweh, is not translated into Greek, but is represented by the four Hebrew letters, uh, Y-H-W-H, uh, written in the ancient Hebrew script known as Paleo-Hebrew. Continuing on, 14. So they cried to the Lord and said, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and do not make us responsible for innocent blood for you. O Lord, you have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him to, into the sea, and the sea ceased to, from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, for the bell fish's belly. And he said, I called to the Lord in my affliction, and he answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and her you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the fold, and the flood was around me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. And I said, I have been cast out of your sight. How will I look again toward your holy temple? The waters closed over me. The deep encircled me. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the roots of the mountain. The earth with its bars closed upon me forever. Yet you have brought the life of my soul up from the pit. O Lord my God, when my life faded within me, remembered the Lord, and my prayer came into you, into your holy temple. They that regard vain idols forsake your faithfulness, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. Salvation is from the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh the great city, and call out to it the message as this, that I am going to tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city, a three days journey, and Jonah began to go into the city one day's walk. And he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh, Nineveh believed God, and they called a fast. And everyone, both great and small, put on sackcloth. And the word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and laid aside his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he had proclaimed, made in Nineveh, had a proclamation made in Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor animal, herd of flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let both man and animal be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily over God, and let him turn each from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may turn and change his mind, and turn away from his fierce anger, so that we do not perish. And God saw their deeds, and they turned from their evil way, and God changed his mind concerning the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah greatly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray, O Lord, that not what I said while I was still in my own country, therefore I fled to Tarshish at first, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and one who relents concerning evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I pray, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it good for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out to the city and sat upon the east side of the city, and there he made a booth for himself and sat under it in the shade, until he had, he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God appointed a plant and made it to come over Jonah that it might shade his head 
to deliver him from his discomfort. And Jonah was very glad about the plant. But God appointed a worm as the morning rose on the next day, and it attacked the plant, so that it withered. And when the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he became faint and pleased and pleaded with his soul to die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Are you right to be angry over the plant? And he said, It is right that I am angry, even to death. And the Lord said, You have had concern for the plant, for which you had not labored or made grow, which came up in night, in a night and perished in a night. And should not I have concern for Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left hand, and so many animals?